Uh, joining us now to break down the Sooners and the Cougars and look ahead to Oklahoma State and BYU's final chance at a bowl game is the ESPN college football analyst and insider national champion Trevor Maddich. Trevor, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. How would you summarize what you witnessed from BYU football in an almost upset of the Sooners? It was encouraging. I mean, we saw what BYU can be in this conference. They played with tremendous energy. They played with physicality. They did almost everything they needed to do right to pull off the win against a team that, that from a roster standpoint and an injury standpoint, notwithstanding the injury to their quarterback, but overall injuries, they shouldn't have been this close to, and yet they were in position to win it. And I think this should give a lot of encouragement to not just the fans, but the players themselves in that locker room who have had a pretty miserable time most of the time in Big 12 play. They, they see for themselves the fruit is on the tree. They can do it in this league. They just need to fix the problems. The run game showed up for the first time, and it was awesome as BYU goes north of 200 yards. Still haven't hit the 400-yard mark on offense, but what changed offensively to get the run game going? Yeah, a couple of things. I think it starts at the top with Coach Satake. We saw him the last couple of weeks in his full magnificence as a fullback <laughs> when he played here. And, you know, the, the fire in his eyes, the fire in his voice, uh, I, I think that's probably been there behind the scenes. We saw it now overtly, and the public can see that th this, this is a coach who who can bring the energy and bring the passion. And I think that that fed into the offensive line and the running back, especially Aiden Robbins. I mean, it, it was amazing. So that's one of the things that happened. I thought they, they fed off the energy of their head coach. The, the offensive line blocked quite well. They did a really good job. And they were able, because of J uh, Jake Retzloff, they were able to run zone reads more often and more effectively, which tends to help. Uh, the offensive line because now you don't have to block everybody you can leave one guy unblocked which gives you an extra blocker at the point of attack and all those things i think added up to putting them in a good position now what, what position was that it was to convert third and fourth down i mean they had they were three for three on fourth down they were uh, just under 50 percent combined third and fourth down so they kept converting which kept the oklahoma defense on the field at altitude and it gave the, the play calling brain staff, I mean, Aaron, Rod, Aaron Roderick and anybody inputting the play calling more opportunities because now you get a new set of downs and then a new set of downs and you're converting third downs and you're moving the chains and the defense is getting gassed and it's working the way it's supposed to be working. You put all those things together and all of a sudden, hey, BYU could run the ball, but they've got to put all those things together like they did against Oklahoma. Trevor Maddich of ESPN is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Trevor, does this qualify as just a full-on moral victory in your mind? I think for fans, it's it's fair to be really encouraged by it. The players and coaches will not see it as a moral victory. They will see the things that could have been that should have made it an actual scoreboard victory. But the way things have been the last couple of weeks where BYU wasn't competitive, I think it's fair to say that, that this is a huge step in the right direction. There's a lot to be encouraged about based on what happened here. Moral victories, you know, it depends on who you ask. But if you ask me as somebody from the outside looking in as both a, an analyst and a fan, I saw so many good things here. If you wanted to find that as a moral victory, okay. But really what it is is a, a step in the right direction. What is better for BYU in terms of who plays at quarterback, assuming that both are completely healthy? Because Keaton Slovis takes care of the ball, but he doesn't have the run game element like Jake Retzloff whose first three, power, first three starts in D1 are Power 5 games in conference and against good teams, so it's been tough. Jake turns the ball over, but he's dynamic. What's the better option for BYU as they try and win one game on the road to get to a bowl game? I still think Keaton Slovis is the best option, if healthy. And it's nothing against Jake. He has a bright future. If it weren't for his performance, BYU would not have been close enough to have might have won that game against Oklahoma. So I don't I don't take anything away from him. I don't point the finger at Jake Retzloff. Even though he made some mistakes in terms of turnovers, he did a phenomenal job that kept him close enough that those mistakes actually mattered instead of just piling on to other things. But Keaton Slovis has a better feel for the offense. He has a better feel for big road games and how to deal with adversity and how to distribute the ball and get the rest of the playmakers engaged. And 
he understands what needs to happen to avoid some of those big mistakes. You know, when I looked at that pick six, um, what I saw was they had run the ball BYU successfully. Bam, bam, bam. Aiden Robbins, just a pile driver down inside the five. And then on that pick six, the Oklahoma defense was scrambling to get lined up. And Jake looked to the left, I think, pre-snap and saw that there was the guy over the receiver in the slot who came flying in to the end of the line because it looked like he was in the wrong spot. What I don't think he saw was that there was another defender who was flying out to take his place. They were all messed up with their assignments, and it looked like the receiver just running inside the goal line uh, and taking a quick pass would be open. But that's the kind of thing that a young quarterback will see one of those guys but not both, whereas a guy like Keaton Slovis has a better chance to see them both and have a chance not just to make a positive play, but to avoid a negative one. Again, I think Jake is one of the reasons that they were in such a good position to win it. But I think for this game against Oklahoma State, if fully healthy, Keaton Slovis still gives them the best chance to win. Trevor Maddich of ESPN on BYU Sports Nation. Is it Jake Retzloff's dynamic nature that finally opened up the run game? Or is it offensive line playing better? Or is there some other element there, Trevor? You know, it's a combination of all those things, and I think they all add up to belief. I mean, Coach Satake with with his fire, and if you could have played, he would have. And I'll tell you what, I would hate to be on the other side of the line from him when he played and now if he suited up. But then the offensive line firing off the ball and sustaining blocks like they did. Aiden Robbins just being a bulldozer. I mean, it was a joy to watch him run. Jake Retzloff. Stretching that defense, because another thing that a mobile quarterback forces the defense to do is stay wide. Front side contain and backside contain both have to stay a little wider and have to stay home a little longer because that quarterback might bootleg out to the backside or he might burst out to the wide to the front side. And so the defense has to compensate, which creates natural gaps inside, which helps the offensive line. All that creates confidence. And then when you string together those first downs and you start to have longer drives and the defense starts to get tired and they can't substitute, all of a sudden it all comes together and you believe because the BYU running game hasn't had a whole lot to hang their hat on to say, okay, we believe we can do this because the fruit hasn't been on the tree. Well, now the fruit is on the tree. Now they see how to do it. We've talked all year about how it seems like guys just don't know how to do it. They don't know how to run block. They don't know how to be successful as a running team. Now they have seen what it's like to be successful, and I think that's a, a super positive thing. Hey, we can all relate to fruit. Tree of life, uh, Alma, we get that analogy. That's awesome. Okay, turnovers are a huge deal, obviously, for this BYU team and most football teams. BYU against Power 5 competition, plus 8 in wins, minus 11 in losses. What was the bigger deal on Saturday, the fact that the defense didn't get any takeaways or that the offense gave it up three times, twice in uh, negative territory, and one was terminal? It was the offense giving it up. Even though the defense didn't give any, didn't get any takeaways, the defense still did a really, really good job. The defense put them in position to win. It was the offensive giveaways that were the difference. And, and this is something else that we've talked about all year, about how BYU needs to win in the Big 12. They need to play cleaner. They need to win the turnover battle, win the penalty battle, which they did not. They had seven penalties. Oklahoma had six. These are things that add up and create the environment for the other team to be able to jump on top. And then BYU has to somehow find a way to come back. And with so many injuries, it's kind of hard for them to make as many plays as they need to make to to come back when they start to fall behind. We saw that the previous several weeks. And so the, giving it away is fundamental to football. And BYU's prime directive is do the fundamentals better than the other side. Make them defeat you instead of giving them gifts to make it easier to do things. And so, um, you know, I, I the, the mistakes were made, the turnovers were made because guys were trying. They were trying probably too hard to do too much. And when you do that, you get a little sloppy with the ball because you see opportunity that you want to take advantage of. And then that ball comes out or that ball gets picked. But that is one of the things that needs to turn around in order for them to win games like this. Trevor, a double-barreled question to end, and it deals with what's going to happen at Oklahoma State for BYU. First, what kind of a chance do you give BYU to win in Stillwater with the Cowboys playing for a spot in the Big 12 championship game? 
And secondly, if BYU does not win and don't go to a bowl game, is this season somehow considered a failure? Well, let's start with that one. Uh, I would say uh, it's not a failure. It, it's disappointing because I think BYU fans and the players and coaches themselves expected to get the six wins. And if they don't get the six win, it will be disappointing. But it's not a failure. And I think it's easy when it's easy. When it's hard, like it has been, especially in, in the last several weeks, that's where you see what you're made of. And BYU in coming back and playing Oklahoma like they did showed not just Oklahoma, not just their fans, but they showed themselves, hey, this is what we're made of. This is what we can be. And that's a triumph right there. How do you deal with adversity? Because you don't want adversity. You want it to be a party the whole time. But what do you do about adversity? That's a success right there. The Oklahoma State game, uh, BYU, or excuse me, ESPN's Football Power Index, FPI, gives BYU an 18% chance to win this game at Oklahoma State. But it was a lot lower than that against Oklahoma, and they almost pulled that one off. Oklahoma State is, is a team that can be really hot or really cold. The thing that you need to do with them uh, is make sure that you first slow down Ollie Gordon the second, their running back. You know, in the early in the season, Oklahoma State really struggled. And then they decided, you know, we're just going to give this guy the ball 20-plus times a game, and all of a sudden they started ripping off win after win after win. So you've got to slow him down. And the second thing is Oklahoma State's defense has struggled in recent weeks to hold down the score and to hold down the yards. And so BYU can see an opening where they can move the ball as long as they don't turn it over and have penalties and have the, the negative plays that stop drives and string things together. So Oklahoma is a game, Oklahoma State is a game that BYU can win, but it would be a quality win because Oklahoma State is a team that still has a lot to play for, and they are very talented. Anytime Trevor Maddich is on the show, it's a party. That alone contained. Trevor, thanks for joining us and for the insight as BYU tries to get to six wins at Oklahoma State. Thanks, guys.